In this video, I'm going to rank every credit card currently available in the New Zealand market. Sticking with the New Zealand theme, I'll be grading them just like NCEA. Just like NCEA, the quality of credit cards in New Zealand also tends to be subpar, but we'll rank what we've got. At the top, we have E for excellence, which represents the best cards in the market. Down from there, we have M for merit, above average, but certainly not the best. We then have A for achieved, representing a fairly average card. And finally, we have an N for not achieved, of course, which are cards that don't meet the mark. These are my own opinions, of course, and I'm simply sharing public information on these cards. You should always discuss your specific needs with a financial advisor and make your own decisions. New Zealand currently has 35 credit cards in the market, offered by 13 providers. Westpac is the largest issuer with seven cards currently available in the market. ANZ and American Express are close behind with five cards apiece. ASB, Kiwi Bank, and BNZ each have three cards on the market. The others have just one or two cards on offer. So that makes up the New Zealand credit card market. Let's start with Westpac. They have a single low fee card, three travel point cards, and another three point reward cards. Let's start with their fee free MasterCard. It has no annual fee, one of the lowest interest rates at 12.9% and has a low income requirement of just $15,000 per year. It's also useful when spending overseas, as it doesn't carry a currency charge as many others do. As a no-fee card, it is a decent offering, especially for those who travel or spend overseas a lot. There is a lot to like about this card, so for that, it gets a merit grade. Next up are the travel and reward cards. These are mainly the same, with only slight differences. The largest difference is the Airpoint travel cards have much higher annual fees. However, the rewards they offer may just be worth it. Let's take a look at the AirPoints MasterCard and the Hot Points MasterCard. From my view, there are two main differences between these cards. First, the annual fee is $70 with AirPoints and $40 with Hot Points. Second, the travel card offers one AirPoint for every $150 spent using the card, and the rewards card offers one Hot Point for every dollar spent. Hot Points are Westpac's reward points, with 667 points equal to about $3 according to Westpac. Each AirPoint on the other hand, is worth $1 on the Air New Zealand website. So a hot point is worth roughly two thirds the value of an air point, which explains why the card has a lower fee. On the air points card, a user needs to spend $10,500 a year to earn back the $70 annual fee in equivalent air points. The hot points card user, however, needs to spend just $8,900 to earn back their annual fee. For an entry-level card, the AirPoints card is poor value, with a high break-even point, so I give it a not achieved grade. The Hot Points card, however, has a lower break-even point, so I give it an achieved grade. Next is the AirPoints Platinum MasterCard and the Hot Points Platinum MasterCard. The former charges $125 a year, and the latter $70. For cards at this price point, the cards pack quite a punch. They're loaded with several insurances, including extended warranty and purchase protection. It also has a slightly inferior 44 days interest free, while the Hot Points card comes in at 55 days. On the AirPoints card, the points earn is one AirPoint for every $110 spent. Over on the Hot Points card, it earns 1.5 points for every dollar. Doing the math, the break-even points are $13,750 on the AirPoints card and $10,400 on the Hot Points one. Both these cards are just okay, in my opinion. Scraping in at an achieved grade, due to their superior insurances, okay rewards, and relatively high interest rate and in-life fees, such as late payment and dishonor. And finally, we have the Westpac AirPoints World MasterCard and Hot Points World MasterCard. With annual fees of $310 and $285 apiece, these are among the most expensive cards in the New Zealand market. They basically take what you get with the Platinum cards that we just looked at and boost it up a little bit. It carries a lower interest rate than other Westpac cards and a lower maximum of 44 days interest free. The AirPoints card earns an AirPoint for every $95 in spending and the Hot Points card earns two points on every dollar spent. The travel benefits from these cards is better than the others we've looked at with the international travel insurance increasing from 35 days cover to 120, 
and you get Priority Pass, which gives you access to the airport lounges around the world. Priority Pass is fantastic, and I've used this benefit in Auckland, Mumbai, Singapore, and in Dubai. With such a high annual fee, the break-even point on these cards is just under $30,000 on the AirPoints card and $31,700 on the Hot Points one. This turns the tables from the other two cards, where the AirPoints card now has the lower break-even point. However, clearly, these cards are very expensive for what they offer. As you'll see later in this video, there are other cards with a lower annual fee and better points earn rates. The Priority Pass is a great feature, however, which pushes these cards into an unremarkable achieved grade. Next up are the ANZ cards. They have a single low rate card, two travel cards, and two cashback cards. Starting with the ANZ low rate visa, it has no annual fee, has a relatively low 13.9% interest rate, and a low currency conversion rate of 1.3% on overseas purchases. This is among the lowest in this list. It also offers a low 1.99% rate for 24 months on balance transfers, which is universal across all ANZ cards. Compared to the Westpac cards that we've seen just before, this one falls short with a high interest rate and charging on currency conversion. If you're looking for a balance transfer card, this might be a good option to consider. So it gets an achieved. Next, we have the AirPoints Visa card. It charges an annual fee of $65 a year, charges an interest rate of 20.95%, and you get up to 44 days interest-free, which is among the lowest in the country. For every $170 spent using the card, you'll earn one air point with Air New Zealand. Aside from this benefit, this card is weak. It offers a lower maximum of 44 days interest-free, higher annual fee, and a higher interest rate than the low-rate ANZ card. To break even and make this card worth your time, you'd need to spend over $11,000 a year, assuming one air point is worth the same as one normal dollar to you. For that reason, I give this card a not achieved grade. Next is the ANZ Cashback Visa. It has an annual fee of $40 and offers $1 of cashback for every $150 spent. Already, you can see there is a lower annual fee than the card we just saw, and you have to spend less to get your dollar reward. Cashback simply means ANZ credits your account with the reward dollars. This is all well and good, until I read the following on their website. Your cashback rewards are credited to your credit card accounts on an annual basis, on the date of your first installment after the anniversary of your first purchase. This pissed me off. Firstly, why are they only paying the reward annually? After your first purchase, this means you have to pay two annual fees to get a single cashback paid into your account. Secondly, the global standard is monthly, just as I had with Citibank in Singapore. DOSH, a free debit card here in New Zealand, gives their users a 50% higher cashback and pay monthly. ANZ need to do better. It has an interest rate of 20.95%, just like the AirPoints card, but it also has a maximum interest-free period of 55 days, much better than the 44 we just saw. The lower annual fee and higher earn rate brings the break-even over the low-rate card to a much lower $6,000. For the many reasons explained, and that cashback doesn't expire and we can spend it anywhere, this card gets a merit grade from me. However, I'm dropping them down to an achieved grade just for their shocking cashback system. Next is the ANZ AirPoints Visa Platinum Card. For both the AirPoints and the Cashback Platinum Cards, ANZ offers a concierge service through Visa for booking travel, activities, or restaurants on your behalf. The card charges an annual fee of $150, an interest rate of 20.95%, and you earn one air point for every $110 spent. There is also a couple travel benefits, such as international travel insurance when you book the trip with your card, some Koru Club discounts, and bonus status points with Air New Zealand. Again, the card has a lower 44 maximum days interest free. With a much higher annual fee, you need to spend over $16,500 a year to earn the annual fee back in air points. This is a higher threshold, and I'm not sure the benefits offer great value, unless you're loyal to Air New Zealand. Zealand. So again, ANZ's AirPoint card gets a not achieved from me. And finally, we have the ANZ Cashback Visa Platinum. It charges an annual fee of $80, an interest rate of 20.95%, 
and a cashback of $1 for every $120 spent. It has a higher minimum qualifying income of $60,000 and a minimum credit limit of $8,000. If you are looking to buy a house, this will significantly hinder your borrowing capacity as the bank severely punishes you for having a high credit limit, so just be mindful. Several of these platinum cards, not only from ANZ but many of the others, will also have this $8,000 minimum. This card also has a higher break-even point of $9,600 in spending each year, but if you expect to spend more than this using the card, it is a better earning option. For me, I'm giving it an achieved grade for its reasonably low fees, but it really isn't an impressive offer. Next up is American Express. One thing to keep in mind with Amex is the fact that not all retailers accept their cards. Supermarkets, fuel stations, and many stores do, but just be mindful, it's not the norm in New Zealand. Starting with the Amex AirPoints card, we have no annual fee, an interest rate of 22.95%, up to 55 days interest-free, and an earn rate of one air point for every $100 spent. This earn rate for a free card is better than ANZ's $150 air points platinum card. As always with American Express, there is no fee for additional card holders. However, the everyday fees like late payment, dishonor, and overseas payments are clearly the highest in our list. There is also a sign-up offer at the moment giving you $50 in air points when you spend over $750 using the card in the first three months. This is a nice little bonus. This card does not suit those making overseas transactions, however, with a high 2.5% currency fee. It also doesn't cater to those who want to carry a balance as the interest rate is 22.95%, which is very high. If you pay your balance in full each month and stick to domestic purchases, it's a useful free card to have. For that reason, I give it a merit grade. Next is the Amex Low Rate Credit Card. It has an annual fee of $59, one of the lowest interest rates in this list of 12.69%, and the same fees with the AirPoints card. For the first six months, Amex offers a low rate of 2.99% on this card. After that, it reverts back to 12.69%. There isn't a whole lot to say about this card, and when we compare it to other cards in this list, it's a weak offer with a high annual fee for what it provides. Unfortunately, I give it a not achieved grade. Next, we have the AirPoints Platinum Credit Card. It has an annual fee of $195 a year, an interest rate of 22.95%, and it is reportedly the fastest AirPoints earning Platinum card on the market. On every $59 of spending, the card returns one AirPoint dollar. This is almost twice as good as ANZ's Platinum card for a slightly higher annual fee. American Express pack a lot into this card, including complimentary domestic and international travel insurance when booked using this card, and even smartphone screen cover when the phone or plan are paid using the card. You also get two passes to the American Express lounges in Melbourne and in Sydney as well as two lounge entries a year through Priority Pass. I actually have this card, and while the Amex lounges in Australia are fairly average, you get access to some great lounges around the world. And finally, you get Kodu Club discounts, as well as earning one status point with Air New Zealand on every $250 spent. If you travel a fair bit and want to collect air points, this card is right up there with the best. It even won the Money Hub Award for their favorite airline credit card, and has a great sign-up bonus with the first $1,500 spent using the card within three months. Just watch the in-life fees and the currency conversion fee of 2.5% when using it overseas, however as these are much higher than what we see with many of the other cards. All up, I give the card our first excellence rating. Next is the Amex Gold card. It has an annual fee of $200, an interest rate of 22.95%, and you earn two membership points for every dollar spent using the card. Amex have a portal where you can convert your points into gift cards. Using this New World one, for example, with the card earn rate, you'd need to spend $4,000 to get a $50 gift card. This equates to a 1.25% return using the card, giving a break-even point of $16,000. However, you essentially get the annual fee back in dining credits. Every year, once the $200 membership fee is paid, you'll receive two complimentary $100 dining credits. These can be used at a selected few fancy restaurants, including Amano, Baduzi, and Depo. Also, you get up to 55 days interest-free, and the card is actually made of metal, which is pretty neat. This card, too, has a sign-up offer, giving $200 back when you spend $1,500 using the card in the first three months. With a fairly decent points offer, and the giving back of the annual fee in restaurant vouchers, essentially, I give this card a merit grade. However, 
as always with American Express cards, be mindful of the higher interest rates and fees if you plan on carrying a balance from month to month. If you plan to carry a balance, look closer at the low rate and low fee card options if you don't want to get caught out. And finally we have the Amex Platinum card. This is by far the most expensive in the list with an annual fee of $1,250 a year. This is a charge card as opposed to a credit card which means the balance must be paid in full at the end of each period. As this card is well beyond the means of most people watching this video, myself included, and a charge card, I'll skip it from this rating as frankly, it's completely incomparable. So if you want to learn more, you can watch a video I made earlier here. Next up we have ASB with three credit cards on the market. They have their Visa Lite card, their Visa Rewards, and their Visa Platinum Rewards. Starting with Visa Lite, it charges no annual fee, has an interest rate of up to 13.5%, and they offer up to 55 days interest-free. Their in-life fees are comparably low, charging $4 on late payments, $3 on cash advances, and 2.1% on currency conversion. They also have a feature called Smart Rate, where you pay 0% interest for six months on eligible purchases above $1,000. All up, it's a fairly basic offer that could be useful for those that need to transfer a balance or make large purchases with the Smart Rate offer, making paying things off easier. So it gets an achieved grade from me. Next is the Visa Rewards card, charging an annual fee of $40, an interest rate of 20.95%, and it has a low minimum limit of just $500. This card charges the same in-life fees as the Visa Lite card and has the same balance transfer offer too. This card offers two reward schemes, either ASB's True Rewards or Woolworth's Everyday Rewards. If you select True Rewards, you'll earn one point for every $150 spent using the card. Each point is worth about a dollar, equating to an earn rate of 0.67% and can be spent at around 20 stores. Everyday Rewards, on the other hand, gives you one point for every $2 spent. 2,000 points or $4,000 in spending equates to a $15 shopping voucher at Woolworths and at BP. This is one of the lowest earn rates of any reward card in the market. However, every six months you get a bonus 2,000 points equating to a $15 voucher. So annually, you'll get $30 of your $40 annual fee back in Woolworths and BP vouchers. They also have a promotion in June where if you sign up and spend $500 in the first three months and select Everyday Rewards as the reward scheme, you'll get up to 20,000 bonus points with an equivalent value of $150 in vouchers. So selecting Everyday Rewards gives you a lower earn rate, but you earn bonus points every six months and it's pretty decent sign up offer. Stripping this away, it's a fairly average card at this price point. ANZ's Cashback Visa card offers a similar effective earn rate with the same annual fee, but has a much lower currency conversion rate of 1.3%. For this reason, at this price point, I give the card an achieved grade. And finally, we have the Visa Platinum Rewards card. It has an annual fee of $80, an interest rate of 19.95%, and charges the same in-life fees as the other ASB cards. It has a higher rewards earn rate, being one point for every dollar spent with true rewards, and the same for everyday rewards, which is a big jump from the card we just saw. The card also offers users international travel insurance when booking using this card. It also has the same sign-up offer when $500 is spent in the first three months. The bonus points, however, increases by 10,000 points to 30,000, meaning you get an extra $75 of value from the promotion. This card is fine, and the true rewards takes the earn rate up to 1%, which is fairly good at this price point. It has flexible rewards that will cater to different people with different needs, and can be redeemed at many large New Zealand retailers. So for that reason, I give this card a merit grade. Now we're up to BNZ. They have three cards, namely the Light Visa, the Advantage Visa Classic and the Advantage Visa Platinum. The Light Visa has a $10 annual fee, an interest rate of 13.5%, and charges 2.25% on overseas currency transactions, which is relatively high. Their in-life fees, however, are low, charging just $2 for late payments, cash advances, and when you overdraw on the card limit. It also has a low $500 minimum limit, requires an income of just $15,000, and offers up to 55 days interest-free. To be honest, there isn't a lot to this card when we consider that many we've looked at don't charge annual fees. They have lower interest rates, they have a lower currency conversion fee, or they might even offer air points. For this reason, it gets a not achieved from me. Next, we have the Advantage Visa Classic card. It has an annual fee of $40, an interest rate of 20.95%, 
and it charges the same in-life fees and currency fee as the light card. The advantage this card offers is either earning flybys or BNZ points. As flybys are leaving the New Zealand market and is yet to be replaced on the BNZ website, we'll just look at the BNZ points. For every dollar spent using the card, you'll earn one point. 1,000 points or spending of $1,000 is the equivalent of $6.70 if it's converted to cash. If we take the farmer's gift card for example, $1,000 in spending equates to about $6.29 in gift card terms. So to earn back your $40 card fee in points value, assuming the cash conversion rate, you'd have to spend at least $6,400 in a year. This is about the same as the other cards at this price point. So it's a pretty simple offer, and for that, it gets an achieved grade. Finally is the Advantage Visa Platinum card. It charges an annual fee of $90, an interest rate of 18.95%, and again, the same in-life fees. As a Platinum card, you'll get a higher earn rate, taking you to 1.67 BNZ points on every dollar spent. This takes the earn rate from 0.67% with the Classic card to 1.05% when converting points for cash. To break even on the annual fee in BNZ points, you'd need to spend at least $8,500 in a year. As a Platinum card, you get a few bonuses. BNZ offered domestic rental car access insurance, emergency travel assistance, concierge service, and international travel insurance when booked using this card. At this price point, it offers one of the highest return rates of 1.05%, it has one of the lowest interest rates and cash advance rates of 18.95% and among the lowest fees. So for this, I give the card a merit grade. Next is Kiwi Bank with three cards on offer. They have the Zero Visa, the AirPoints Low Fee Visa, and the AirPoints Platinum card. Their Zero Visa card has no annual fee, a low 12.9% interest rate on purchases and cash advances, and they offer up to 55 days interest free. They also offer a similar deal as ANZ on balance transfers of 1.99%. However, Kiwi Bank offers it for a shorter six months instead of 24. They charge a $5 fee on late payments, $6 when you withdraw from ATMs abroad, and a currency conversion rate of 1.85%, which is on the lower end. All up, it's a simple low rate card with a simple fee structure. For that, I give the card an achieved grade. Next is the AirPoints Low Fee Visa. It has an annual fee of $50, charges a 16.9% interest rate on purchases and cash advances, and allows up to 44 days interest free. Aside from the annual fee, this card is similar to the others with the fee structure the same and you can also take on the balance transfer promotion using this card. Unlike the card we looked at earlier, this one earns Air New Zealand Air Points. On every $200 of spending using the card, you get an Air Point back. This translates to an earn rate of 0.5% and you'd need to spend at least $10,000 in a year to earn the annual fee back in Air Points. At this price point, the rewards are fairly average. If we look at the BNZ Advantage card we covered earlier, it has a lower annual fee and a higher earn rate. So for that reason, this card gets an achieved grade. Finally, we have the Air Points Platinum Visa. It has an annual fee of $180 an interest rate of 20.95% and the same standard fees as other Kiwi Bank cards. Being a Platinum card, you get some added bonuses, including concierge service and international travel insurance. You also get Kodu Club discounts and earn one air point for every $115 spent using the card. At this price point, this card has the worst earn rate of 0.87% meaning you'd have to spend over $20,000 to earn the annual fee back in air points. The ANZ Air Points Visa is a lower $150 a year, offers 18 more months balance transfer, it has a lower currency conversion rate of 1.3%, and you only need to spend $110 to get an air point, instead of $115, like we get with this card. Even Westpac's Platinum MasterCard packs more punch down at $125 annual fee. This card gets a not achieved grade, as frankly, it isn't competitive. Now we move along to SBS, and they have two cards in the market. First, we have the SBS Visa Credit Card, and the second is the Purple Credit Card. The SBS Visa Credit Card has no annual fee, charges a rate of 19.65% on purchases and offers up to 55 days interest free. It has a 2% fee on foreign currency transactions, charges $10 on late payments, 
$1 in cash advances, and $2 on overseas cash advances. It also offers $1 in cash back for every $150 spent using the card. For comparison, Westpac charges $70 a year for a card with the same earn rate. Amex has a better earn rate of 1% on their AirPoints card. However, a cashback is more valuable as you can spend your rewards anywhere. And being backed by Visa, the card is accepted by more merchants, so this is valuable. While ANZ pays their cashbacks annually, SBS pays out quarterly, which is more respectable. CanStar have also given this card 5 stars for outstanding value, for 5 years running. Among the cards with no annual fee, the SBS card has the second best earn rate and the convenience of being much more widely accepted than Amex. For this, I give the card a merit grade. SBS SBS also backs something called the Purple Credit Card, which offers users points for spending. It charges an annual fee of $55, and again, another $55 as an establishment fee, and an interest rate of 26.65%, which is the highest we've looked at so far. On cash advances, this rate jumps up to a whopping 29.4%. This card charges a late payment fee of $15, cash advance fees of $1 and $2 both here and abroad, and a currency conversion fee of 2%. So why would people get this card? At certain stores, shoppers can get 12 months interest-free on all purchases over $250. Yeah, sure, it's interest-free. But the fees, on the other hand, are $110 in the very first year. And if you carry the balance over 12 months, well, then you'll pay a silly 26 plus percent. These cards are full of fish hooks to anybody that has issues using or paying off credit cards. It's a big fat not achieved in my book as these cards are trying to get people to spend and those fees are just interest costs in disguise. Now we're up to TSB with their low rate MasterCard and their Platinum MasterCard. The low rate MasterCard has an annual fee of $20, a super low interest rate of 9.95% on purchases and cash advances, and offers up to 55 days interest-free. It has a low minimum credit limit of $500, simple fees of $10 for a late payment, and charges 1.9% on currency conversion. You also require an income of $18,000 to qualify for this card. You also get a range of insurances when you use the card, including purchase protection, price protection, and mobile protection. Mobile protection, for example, pays out if you accidentally damage a phone that you top up using your TSB card, minus an excess of just $55. They also have a six month balance transfer promotion at 0%, the same as what ASB had. It has the lowest interest rate in the list by some margin. The sub 2% currency conversion rates, an acceptable annual fee of $20, and several insurances to boot. I give this card an excellence grade as it has a low interest rate for those who carry a balance and it also has several insurances such as mobile which is certainly useful and unique at this price point. Another card they offer is the TSB Platinum MasterCard. It charges an annual fee of $90 a year, charges an interest rate of 20.95%, and charges the same in-life fees as the low-rate card. The cashback is great on this card as well, offering $1 cashback on every $70 spent using this card. This is second only to the American Express AirPoints card. To break even on the $90 annual fee, you need to spend just $6,300 using the card, which is by far the lowest break-even point for any card below $100 a year. In addition to the insurances covered when we looked at the low-rate card, this one also adds domestic and international travel insurance. Most Platinum cards with an annual fee above $100 a year don't add the domestic travel insurance, so this is a positive. Comparing this card to others around the $100, $150 mark a year, this card clearly stands out. For that, I must give it an excellence grade too. We now get to the Cooperative Bank with their Fair Rate Credit Card. It has an annual fee of $20, charges an interest rate of 12.95% on purchases and cash advances, and offers up to 55 days interest-free. They also offer a 0% rate on transferred balances, just like TSB that we just covered. They have a $10 charge for late payments. $7 for international cash advances, and 2.1% cash conversion fee. There isn't much else to share about the card, with no reward points and a fairly average interest rate and fee structure in this category, so it gets an achieved grade from me. Now we reach the final four cards, Farmers, Q, Flight Center, and Gem. These are similar to the purple card as they offer interest-free deals to luring customers while charging relatively high fixed fees. Frankly, I don't like any of them. They target those that would otherwise 
otherwise not spend so much in store, so for that reason, they won't be featuring in this video. Tallying up the grades, this is what we get. Just like the grade profile from the NCEA Level 1 Unfamiliar Text Paper, my grading too fits within the same profile, with 10% excellence, 20% merit, and 46% achieved. The remainder got not achieved. I don't work for any of these banks, nor do I have affiliate links for any of these cards, so these views are completely honest. Just keep in mind, this rating is purely from my perspective and you might value different factors than me. I've shared public information on each of these cards. If you want personalized advice and what might work for you, make sure you reach out to an authorized financial advisor. And as always, when we talk about credit cards, paying them off every single month is the best and recommended approach. This will help you avoid the very high interest rates that you get with this type of product. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.